and welcome to our in-house recruitment video and podcast series. My name is Natasha Priya Cannon. I'm the Managing Director of In-House Recruitment. Today, our guests are Dominic Harvey of CW Jobs and Steve Ward from Universum. So thank you very much to you guys for joining us today. And um, before we get started, it is probably worth you guys introducing yourselves and doing a uh, doing yourselves justice. So um, perhaps, Dom, uh, you can get us started and um, introducing yourself and a quick introduction of who CW Jobs are. I'm Dom Harvey. I'm the sales director of CW Jobs. Uh, and CW Jobs has been supplying uh, tech candidates to UK businesses for the last 21 years. And Steve? Hi everyone, I'm Steve Ward. I, um, I work for Universum. I'm the UK and Ireland director. Um, we have been operating for 30 years doing student research, professional research into brand perception, the needs of people and what they're looking for in their careers, etc. Uh, and that leads to us supporting organisations with employer brands, EVP and marketing communications off the back of that knowledge of what external markets and people think of themselves. Thank you very much guys for, for joining us. I'm looking forward to having a little bit of uh, conversation around some of the uh, the items that you uh, you guys are doing. So um, Don, perhaps um, we can get started with um, the annual confidence index survey that you guys run within the tech market. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit around some of the survey results and um, and what those uh, results show. So perhaps you could get us started with actually just giving us a bit of an overview as to what the survey is um, and why it is that you run it. But essentially you want to get take the, the, the temperature of the, the audience and the IT workforce uh, and help employers make the, the right decisions to attract and, and retain um, this diverse pool of talent. Coronavirus undoubtedly had some impact on, on people's confidence. Um, however, the, the general level of confidence still remains very high. 81% uh, of UK IT professionals are confident in the state of the UK's tech industry. Uh, this is down last year from 89%, but it's still, 81% uh, is still very, very high. And when we look at what drives it, it's, it's really the skill base that we have within this country and the kind of technology and the products we're producing uh, really, really boosts that figure. Uh, yes, it's it's dipped slightly in the, in the private sector. And actually um, there's a drop of 10% from the public sector wanting to move into the private sector. But uh, overall, it's it's strong. Um, another piece of information uh, was that we saw uh, salary expectations in the short term, uh, four in 10 people not expecting uh, a huge boost in their salaries over the next year. But actually, if you look forward, 48% uh, think that in the next five years, their, their salaries will, will go up quite nicely. Um, so I think that's an indication of the, the realism of the, the people that have answered this in that, yes, this is going to be a tough year to ride out, but things on the whole are good going forward. Um, in terms of the, the job market specifically, um, for the respondents, how confident are they in, in that sector? Um, and is that the same on the employer side as well? Yeah, so COVID-19 replaced Brexit at the top of concerns uh, in the industry. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty in the moment on how the domestic and international markets are going to recover from this, this crisis uh, and how the impact of, of this pandemic will, will hit us and what, what will it mean for the, the tech industry specifically. Uh, I, I think that overall though, yes, everybody is going to take a hit on this, but I think that the tech market in particular is well placed to bounce back strongly um, in, in the long term. And, and I'm talking probably three to five years here. And, and I think tech is an industry um, that seems to be doing reasonably well through this. I think as Dom has just alluded to really, uh, the conversations we're having with customers are very much around, uh, because it's, so much of it's around branding and employer brands, they're wanting to know um, how they stay maintain, how they maintain their potency in the marketplace, how do they uh, stay ahead of the curve through it as well. So, so I, I think what we're seeing is that the, the, the IT market is strong. It's the IT market that is kind of seeing us through a lot of this as well. I think we've all turned into digital customers now through this period, much more than we were before. And so we've got a real uh, dependency on our IT professionals. They're the ones who are leading it forward. So what it, I think, so I think it's intriguing at the moment. I think people are aware that there's more technology that's going to be used in the way we work 
um, which sort of gone through the future of work a little bit fast just recently, um, and therefore probably that's going to impact the demand on tech talent even more so. Um, if it can possibly be, be even more demanding, but it really, really well will be. Now's the ideal time to really be reshaping uh, the, the way you look for tech talent. Uh, and, and some of the advice I'd give is, is promote a career in tech, maybe to local schools and colleges, uh, and, and commit to training people and, and using that um, apprenticeship side of things because you can actually shape the, the diversity approach, the inclusion, diversity and inclusion by who you allow into that apprenticeship scheme. Re-examine your current hiring, hiring strategy. Uh, where are you putting your job ads? How are you putting them out there? Recent research with our candidates shows that, that salary, location, required skills, description of tasks is also very important. Are you telling people what they are going to be doing or are you shaping it as a challenge that needs to be overcome with their input? Look at upskilling your, your own employees. Uh, you may have people that know your company inside out, really be at the forefront of trying to encourage innovation within the workplace. Um, companies that are standing still are, are going very much backwards. And also be part of promoting the UK's tech sector. If, if you can and you, and you have a real uh, techie product, be at the forefront of, of shouting about it. And the fact it is a UK product and that you're a good place to to, to come and work uh, because you will get a trickle through of, of candidates from that but equally you'll get people that are proud to work with yourself and, and maybe you can retain them a little bit longer. And um, Steve, did you have any sort of additional um, sort of thoughts on? on yeah, and I think Don, Don makes some really good points. Uh, definitely one about, because I think one of the trends we will see coming out of this is the is possibly in certain elements the unwillingness to move um, or the want for security. I think one of the things that comes out of CW's um, surveys of the need for kind of security and assurance and and because people don't want to be uncertain right now they want to be sure of what they so I think the way in which we look after our people in regard to listening to them what do they need how can we retain employees how can we skill employees and empower the teams we have is a great start. The current pandemic has seen a an incredibly sudden amplified dependency on technology and that's through the remote, the enforced remote and flexible working. And it's interesting and it will be interesting to see how that then continues on. So um, do you think uh, that this, this will impact the skills gap and do you think that skills gap is going to increase moving forward? I certainly think it will. It has to, just mathematically, the amount of people, <laughs> the amount of investment that's going to have to go into, into tech um, means that there's not going to be enough people in a, in, in a market where there's already not enough people. So it's sim simply going to amplify that. Uh, six in 10 of the respondents to the survey believe there will be a change in, in the way, the, the intrinsic way we, we work in the future because of this, uh, this crisis. And that will lead to companies reassessing their remote working policies. We've already seen that happening with Twitter, um, saying you, you're working from home permanently and indefinitely. Uh, I'm sure that other companies will follow. But the really intriguing thing is when you look at the pre-COVID-19 uh, answers, 43% of IT decision makers agreed they needed all of their employees to be in the office every single day for the company to be a success. Now that's on an absolute crash course with the 60% that say um, there's going to be a, a total upheaval in how we work together. So it's going to be really fascinating to see how this pans out. Where have the skills been needed thus far, sort of up to COVID-19. Um, and, and what sort of skill set do you think will be necessary in the future for candidates to be able to succeed within that tech market? Um, Don, I think you had a few sort of questions on that in your survey, which might be good to sort of see yeah. what the, the results were. It, once you consider the, the current environment, it comes as no surprise really, the top three are IT support skills, cybersecurity and network infra infrastructure. Um, no, you know, it comes as no surprise that IT support skills, seeing as I'm on my third laptop of this period in, in the last 10 years, um, you know, support's been vital to just being able to do your job. Um, cybersecurity, similarly, um, I, I think it's fair to say that home-based uh, networks are probably a little bit more less, less secure than um, the fortress that is most offices these days. And the network infrastructure, how to access that data, maybe in, in um, the, the centralised 
centralised office arena. So I think artificial intelligence is, is still going to be massive. It's, it's one of those um, buzzwords that simply isn't going away. But again, cybersecurity, I think, is, is going to become uh, hugely important purely because one wrong move can bring an entire company down, dare I say, country, potentially. Um, the cloud, not necessarily having to have a direct link with your business. Um, I mean, again, speaking from personal experience, the VPN went down, I couldn't access um, specific documents, whereas if they were on the cloud, um, they, would, they would be easier to get hold of. There's also the Internet of Things, um, the big data evolution from that Internet of Things and everything being measured. Um, I think there's a shift uh, to those types of skills needed um, for now and, and in, in the future. But I, as Steve said earlier, this crisis has, in most areas, only accelerated what was happening in the background. Mm -hmm.